evening. I'd like to call the regular monthly meeting of the Salem Board of Education to order at six o'clock. Would we all please stand to pledge the flag? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this point, I'd like to open the meeting to for public comment. If there's anybody here who would like to share any thoughts or concerns with the board, there will be a second public comment. Yes, later. there's one at the end. Thanks. Bill. Good evening. My name is Bill Kijari. Uh, the only reason I came down here is I'm trying to wrap my head around this what I perceive to be illegal building project phase two. Uh, at the special meeting that we had in October of last year, you were all here, or some of you were here, some of you weren't. Uh, I asked if I could get the submitted document to the state of New York itemized list of what was going to be done. Uh, first of all, I didn't know who submitted that. Second of all, I didn't know who signed it. Which, as I deal with the Board of Education, I'm finding that's a tough nut to crack. So, uh, you were able to you said that you get me a copy, and this is what I got, right. which is the same thing that I got in the mail. So I'm hoping that the it's board it. didn't stick this in an envelope and send it down to the state of New York and say, hey, we want to borrow $21.3 million uh, to do all the stuff that's on this thing that we passed out to the community. Uh, so there must be an official who, who, who signs the initial forms for uh, building projects. Is it the superintendent, the president of the board? Uh, There's probably a host of answers to that question because different parts of the project would have different, I know that I have to sign some things as board president that had to do with some of the, uh, the, um, the funding that came in on some of the projects. Um, I know that there were some contracts that have to be signed with the business office and the super. Some of them are between the superintendent. So it, it, it is specific to, it's not just one um, large laundry list of items, but it's multiple steps for the different parts and components. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm just curious as how you can hire an architectural firm to come in and give you estimates. I used to work in industry. I used to deal with requests for quotes from many people, and I would tell them what I wanted. They would tell me what they were giving me. So with, with that being said, how can they uh, quote, estimate, quote, school not to exceed 20, it was $21.3 million, correct? correct? Now was Mosaic's uh, money, $1.5 million included in that, or that comes out of a different pocket? The, the cost of their services, is that what you're asking? Right. When Glover was here, I did ask that question, uh, and he couldn't really give me a number, but the person from the architect firm said that they were getting a million and a half dollars uh, on a $21.3 million job. So I'm just curious, is the money coming out from the $21.3 million, or does it district residents have to fork over that money. For the architect fees? Yeah. That's all part of the building project. That is part of the building project. Okay, so you take the $1.5 million out of the $21.3 million and you end up with 19.8. And at that special meeting where you said we were going to go into phase two, you originally had $4.6 million. The next meeting that I came to, Julie, said that this is when it's got mailed to me or emailed to me. Said that all the costs weren't in. Yep. We're down to four point one million dollars. I see on the website that we're down to three point nine million dollars, or is it still four point one million? If you go on the sale on website. So, so we have four point approximately four point one million. We still have the four point one million. Approximately. 
Um, so we're still uh, working through uh, some final closeouts, some discrepancies between our our not what we think we should pay with a few of the vet, of the contractors. So, um, but roughly we have about 4.1. We came in, we want to come in conservatively just with the understanding of inflation right now and not approve 4.1 million worth of work. Uh, so we did at, we did um, identify an add on if we do have um, the additional funds there if say prices start to go back down again we're not sure so we'll have um, have a vestibule that's an add-on if needed so um, one of the one of the flaws in, in the process last time was that um, a good practice would be to identify some add-ons if in the, that we had in this case the additional funds, the 4.1. And if that would have been done originally, then we wouldn't have had to have those conversations again. So um, that is why there's a little bit of confusion here and why, but it is, as the, we've talked about in the past, somewhat common sometimes to have to not spend all of the money because there's contingencies built in. Now, um, as someone else had inquired and we did uh, speak at one of the meetings, I'm not sure if you were there, um, after some of these conversations, there was another uh, uh, resident of the town who also had some questions and, uh, and had brought forth some additional questions as well. And one of the things is just so you know, is when the project, that part of the project is closed out and Karen jump in, you understand the details more, you deal with it. We then, um, New York State, actually goes through and does an audit of everything. So they're going to make sure that the expenditures were appropriate at the at the time. So my next question would be why wasn't plan two or phase two listed in this document? And maybe it, uh, from the sound of it, it wasn't put on there correctly uh, when, the, when the proposal was submitted. So I just wonder why? I mean, I don't know who you guys talked to. I talked to a few people in town past week, and one of them didn't even know that they wanted to close the yard. They thought it was last night. Sorry. Uh, it doesn't do anything for the education of the students. It may have something to do with safety. Uh, it's going to deter the architectural features that this foundation has stood for for over 80 years. The other thing that I noticed in this, is, is after I read it over again, every five years, the school is supposed to have a comprehensive building condition survey. And according to this, this was done in 2016. The, the, the previous one was done in 2016. Has the school had one in 2021? Or if you're doing a building project, you can just sweep that under the rug and not do that. We're due to have one next year, next so, year, so I'm not sure. I can't obviously speak well, I know. to You've the timeline, but um, it's my understanding, and we've already had some preliminary discussions that um, we'll have that next year. And it is again that is accounted for by New York State. They keep us on the timeline, so they we have to report uh, all of that, the results of that survey. <coughs> That's mandated, so. I'm not sure um, about the communication in that, and I could go back in and tell you exactly okay. when it was done. But the problem was because of COVID, all uh, of the oh, sure. they all yeah. pushed back. Okay. The state pushed everybody's timeline yeah, back. I know, yet. but that's what they did. So. Okay. Yeah. So I know that with the reconstruction of everything that they did here, I know that they sold the bleacher wood for $3,500 or $3,800. They sold scrap and everything. Uh, who got that money? And how much money was it and where did it go? I'm sure it wasn't four million dollars. I was he talking about? The were we had sales. sales for um, sale. Oh and well they, they had an open bid. That's correct. Yeah. Open bid. It goes back Somebody writes the school a check. Right. What does the school do with the money that they receive? That goes into our general fund as um, property sold. We have an account for that. Okay. There's still money in there. Mm -hmm. Now, do we still have uh, last year or yeah, last year we voted on we're going to have another 1.5 million dollar 
in the capital fund? A capital fund besides the one million dollars that you carry over from year to year. So what's what's that money going to be used for? The capital fund can only be used for capital projects. So is that going to be rolled in with the supposed closure of the airtrain? That that has not been determined. Okay. That that initially is not the plan. Okay. So are we doing any routes? I know that in the original uh, meeting, and, and I haven't seen any new information <coughs> on the website, um, what's been sealed back, what things are going to look like. Are you going to publish something like this and uh, mail it out to the general public so that everybody knows what's going on here at Salem? Probably not. Uh, but at some point in time, you've got to have a plan. And I just like the public to know about it. Where their money is going and you know basically what you're trying to do to the school uh my last thing that i want to say is going through your meeting docs i know tonight is the night somebody's got a sign here from mosaic that uh, they still have architectural work to do and i guess you're going to give them more money how much have they been paid so far i don't have that number okay uh not even close it's not no I, I didn't come in prepared to talk about that no, okay sorry. but you have it if i called you you could give it to me i could get the number if it's 1.5 million we'll maybe get an extra whatever point. the contract was for for the original project well the original project is the one that they just completed right so are they getting more money to do this additional work if there's additional work they would get additional money yeah <laughs> I think that's a big snap Oh, uh, but anyways, they got to do all this stuff and they're not going to start until it says uh, on or about June 26, 2024, which is a year, year and a couple months away from now. And they're not going to finish it until uh, uh, the following year, 2025. Well, the last meeting I was here, I asked the board, not all the board members were here, but I asked the board to <coughs> consider without causing the taxpayer a nickel. Uh, I went back over the original assessment. I looked at your uh, plan, phase two, and I saw all the buses lined up there in, the, in their nice little drawing and everything. And uh, I counted nine buses. I don't know if we had more than nine or not, more than nine. Uh, but I asked the board to consider without breaking any ground, changing anything, get with the bus drivers, get with the custodians, have them start this block off the arch, park the car, and I'll bring my car down and park it if you want me to. I'll bring my camera and I can take pictures in the morning of students coming in. Because in the diagram, if you, if you look closely at the pictures that they gave you guys all the buses are angled in when they come in drop the kids out from school everybody gets out they're on the school side Boop. they go in they have a farther way to walk i don't know what the students i don't know if you've taken a survey in school to see if any of the students what their thoughts are about closing the arch in uh, in the reverse when the kids have to Lake school, the buses are angled the other way. Now the doors, unless you're going to start buying buses with doors on both sides, like you know, like the minivans have the doors on both sides. Uh, the, the students have to either wander around behind the bus, between the bus, in front of the bus to so get that, that. The way they will angle in is in the direction that they'll nose out. So no student will be behind the bus. But those actually are only draft renderings. They are not the final anything. Uh, anything. It's just a representation of what we will be talking about as we move forward to that that start date. Of but do, would you would you say that? I mean, they've got to get to the driveway side of the bus in order to get on the bus. And you're right. You are correct. There are still many many questions and and you know things that need to be determined as to how we're going to move forward with that. But we just asked for 
what something what situation might look like if we didn't um, go with the original discussion, which was to to go across uh, where the old uh, playground was. So what would it look like if we kept it on the space that, you know, so that was a rendering to help us understand whether it was possible or not. So it really is still, it's not a, a completed project. It's not a schematic for, for the, um, you know, what it's going to look like when we finish. Actually, the renderings that we saw are really still dreamscape. I mean, we still don't have the specifics of, of you know, the, the architectural design for, for any part of the project yet. So um, those things are still, you know, in the discussion phases with them, and that's part of that. Um, so is there any, work, any know, investment going into the roofing off of what money is left over? It's definitely something that's on our radar. Um, I'm going to be honest with you that, you know, we as board members were not aware of exactly where we stood, but they, Mosaic did, I think, a nice job of outlining the areas of the roof and, you know, the work that needed to be done in those different areas to give us a better idea of, you know, what we would need to consider as we move forward. So it is definitely something that is going to be in the planning project as we, as we move forward. Well, according to them, that cost is going to be roughly $3.6 million. It, it will be a significant cost because there's multiple different types of roofing and the slate roofing on the on the main part of the, the building will be an expensive you know, project too. So as far as my money is concerned, I'd rather, rather spend that money, <coughs> the $4.1 million, take $3.6 million, get the roofs done. We don't have to worry about another building project but un un unless the Superintendent of the board thinks we need a um, Olympic sized swimming pool or, or maybe a you know a big indoor stadium. Well, we, we are trying it. to keep our you know eye on the prize and make sure that we are maintaining maintaining the buildings. And you are correct that the emphasis in um, this next part of the, the projects that we are anticipating undertaking have to do with accessibility of the building and safety of the building. And those are the things that are driving driving those those plans. Okay. And roofing is it's, it's in the it's in it's in the pipeline for discussion. It's okay. will be the next well, I, you know, major uh, project to be. What bothers addressed. me is that I have to come down here, and the, the board members aren't considering taking taking care of the structure. Oh, I, is, please believe yeah. me. We all we all have that at heart. Now, that arch has stood for over eighty years. You're right. It has. But it still makes between the two buildings, it makes it extremely difficult for every person to be able to access both sides of the elementary. The elementary is in both buildings. It's in the smaller building and it's in the larger building. They have to come over for the, their specials. They have to come over for the cafeteria. And it makes it very difficult and unsafe for kids sometimes to make that transition between the two buildings. It's access and safety. All right. Well, I guess that's all. If, if there is a, and Karen might know, if there is a form that the state has, and maybe I can get it if I FOIL them uh, to give me that form, and I'm sure uh, Mosaic is the one that submitted the form, and they're not going to give me that because uh, I just wonder how the next building projects that we're going to have here, and I still plan on being around for the next two anyways, uh, so if you guys are still on the board, you'll see me uh, when I disagree with something that you're doing. But I do hope that you will strongly, strongly. I know that I've got some time here, and I've got some ideas, and I've got some communications in the pipeline that uh, I want to make the community aware of what the board is doing. Uh, maybe we'll get it on national news or something like that. Uh, but I'll see what I can do. I continue to. Keep bothering the state of the department to see uh, how you know if, if there's wording in the document that was submitted that says that's next. You would you yourself admitted it's that special meeting that you're, the you're, book did not make the cut. Well, it wasn't that it didn't make the cut. It was just those were and we went back and we looked at conversations that were had. Uh, Resources that we had that well, talked about what was, was 
That was on tape. I was there and somebody was taping it. So, oh, uh, I'm, but I'm talking about even prior to when there's okay. those, those, the ones that the, the archway and those things and the, the change in the, the bus configuration, those were all things that had been considered prior to you know, the, the final plan. So those were, we had felt that you know, people <coughs> that we had been talking about. But you know, before I and I know you had some questions for Mrs. McGregor. If at any point that you have questions for us, you can always forward them to Mrs. Eastman. She can get that information. We can have it either ready for a board meeting or for you in, at any time. We don't have to wait for a board meeting to have any of those questions answered. That gives me 30 days off when I come on vacation. I know you guys got work to do, and I'll let you uh, go to it and ask your classmates what they think of. Uh, in the yard. Okay. I know that I was at a meeting with Mr. Glover. I won't call him doctor because I don't think very much of him. But he had threatened to shutter the small school, move all the students over here. Then there's no concern for safety. Now, there may be, um, you know, the school originally had over 900 students. Now we're down to 560. I don't know what your anticipated enrollment is for next year. Uh, I mean, we're giving everybody offices by the main door, so we're spreading our uh, faculty out to cover all the locations. And I know we've got cameras, and you know, I don't know how long it would take for the cops to get here. Should anything ever happen, uh, I hope that nothing ever does. But uh, so there are rooms probably that are available. So if you were concerned about safety, just move all the uh, kindergartners. Open right into the main building with the rest of the students. I'll let you guys get to your business. I gotta go home and dinner. Thank you. You don't want to stay for the rest? No. Why? Is there, no, is there good stuff it's coming it's up? <laughs> oh, oh, I just want to mention on your doc, on your dot doc, whatever it is. Can you get somebody to put in there? Because every time I go in there and read it, it says that the board event meeting will be held in the cafeteria. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I yeah, don't think it's uh, on the, uh, the board webpage or what? Yeah, on the board webpage, you pull up the board, you send a meeting that says, no, oh, meetings are held every third Wednesday, six okay. o'clock in the cafeteria. Okay, no, so on the page, so on the camp, we, that on the calendar, we have it listed in the library, but must be that was an oversight. Thank you for letting All us right, know. We'll, we'll fix that. Well, it's one small step for me. Thank you. Thank right, you for bringing it to our attention. I don't want to hear any questions while I'm done. All right. See you next time. Is there any other comments or questions? No. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We will have an additional uh, public comment. And we see moving on to reports and presentations. Ms. Adams, the superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, a few updates this evening. Um, the first update is regarding uh, a portion of our capital work. Um, the part of our capital work was planned to uh, replace the cafeteria doors uh, exiting out and that ramp uh, entrance exit there. And uh, so that project uh, was estimated to um, come in in a cer certain uh, ballpark along with our um, netting that we put up. So that was combined in a project with the netting for uh, protecting the property of one of our neighbors from fly balls uh, that was recently put together. Originally, the project was estimated to come in combined between the cafeteria doors and the net at about around 100,000. <laughs> hundred or less, yeah. And um, so we had, uh, by the time we had gotten the approvals from SED, the netting was up to about, and we spent, I think it's 64,000. And the bid for the doors just came in. We only received one bid and it was came in at 159,000 for, for the two doors. Uh, so mosaic. Get a gold. Mosaic, our architect, um, felt that that was that bit was high. If we could combine that with um, our bids for the remainder of the projects that we're we're working on, uh, that we could 
most likely get that uh, at a much lower cost okay. because it would be combined it with other work okay. uh, for a contractor. In addition, um, there's been a downside in many ways to uh, some of the delays that we've had uh, in closing out our project due to a variety of delays caused by COVID and some other things. So, um, but that since that project isn't completely, that project number isn't completely closed out, we can put the netting in with that and uh, still, still get an aid on, on that. So what happens is you need that outdoor project needs to be combined with an indoor project for the outdoor project to be eligible for aid. So we still can get aid on that 64,000. Karen just got that news today. Uh, so we are taking the bid approval off in a few minutes. We'll be taking that off of the, uh, the consent agenda. Um, so do you have any questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, all right, so just a few other quick things, our strategic planning uh, timeline. So I've been corresponding with Kevin McGowan, who's our consultant that we're going to work with on our strategic plan. Um, so initially we had discussed starting our thought exchange, our survey of all of our stakeholders in February. Uh, since we did push uh, back to the, to the calendar availability of everyone involved uh, our, um, to the end of April, our start point of kind of evaluating the data. We talked about we're going to start the thought exchange uh, after break. So either the last week of February, first week of March, he's going to send me the materials. We'll put together our letter um, and our correspondence with the stakeholders explaining the process and uh, working with Amy Hopper to put that out there. And that will also include the timeline uh, so that we can start getting the word out uh, for stakeholders that might be interested uh, when we come together as that large group to do our work with all of the stakeholders um, once we have the survey results. So we'll be working on that and I'll update you at our next meeting. We'll have a better idea of really how everything's falling. Uh, and we'll also be, I'll be working with Amy Hopper on uh, sending out reminders um, to the community regularly because one of the benefits of the thought exchange and one of the greatest features is that you can go in and rate other people's comments and ideas um, as a community. So you want to go in more than once. So if you go in on the first week and it's going to be open for three weeks, you want to go back a few times to go in and rate um, other thoughts or ideas that might have been shared after you shared your own. So we will send out some, we'll have some regular reminders as well. And a uh, few other things, uh, risk management consultant. So our, um, we just reconvened our safety committee and we have quite a few things really to do um, to, in, the, in, the, in our work. And um, so we deal with a risk management consultant, um, not only on school safety, but also building safety um, OSHA requirements, fire safety, fire inspections, all of those things. Uh, we have um, been working in the past with Capridge and BOCES. Um, they provide they, the service that they provide, um, I think has value, but uh, it's not as comprehensive as um, uh, the majority of our schools in our region are now going with um, a company called Needham Risk Management. So we've been exploring that. Um, they, uh, they have taken over a lot of professional development opportunities as well through the BOCES. And I attended a few workshops. I was quite impressed with them and um, a lot of good feedback from the superintendents. And for us being a small school, uh, they really get involved in, in helping um, with our safety committees, our safety plan. Uh, we really need to be working on uh, evacuations, evacuations off campus uh, that would be local, that might, you know, if we need to evacuate off to another school district, they can really assist with those. They have, they have a background. They also, um, you know, attend a lot of uh, workshops with law enforcement and, and, um, the such. So um, we are looking at um, 
Karen and I have talked a lot about it. We're looking to possibly make a change over to Needham. It is going, it will be an aidable expense, uh, but it will be something because it's not, um, it's a new, it's a new contract. Uh, and initially we will contract Ravosi's, but we let, if we do go with them, we're gonna be meeting with the owner um, in the next week or so, just to really just make sure all of our questions are answered, but the board would just need to approve that new contract if we go that way. So you may see that coming along soon. Um, I just think for us and what we need to do right now, uh, it would create a lot of efficiencies for us and they would provide uh, a lot of additional support that would be helpful. Um, especially since we have, we're going to have brand new administrators there. A lot of times you have an, a, a building principal or an administrator who would carry some of that leadership of those, of those safety um, projects. And it's just a lot to put on new principals at the time as well. So I think, um, you know, it's something that we're moving towards and you'll hear a little more about it. Uh, our principal positions, both the elementary principal and junior senior high school principal position is posted um, now. We posted it at the beginning of the week and it uh, will be posted through March 1st. I'm getting um, some e some direct emails of interest, some follow-up emails letting me know people, a few people have applied. Um, pleased um, so far with a few of the potential candidates. So uh, we'll see what we have. And uh, so after break, I'll be working with uh, our interim principals to do some screening and to set up a stakeholder committee uh, to do interviews. My, my goal is probably ambitious, but I'd, I'd love to have a candidate uh, to the board um, for, for each position and for approval at the April meeting, um, but no later than, than the May meeting. Uh, so that we, you know, ideally could possibly have that person come in and spend a little time in each building, each person with the interims. Um, so there was a little transition there. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep you posted on that. And finally, very exciting, our girls basketball team is uh, seated number one in the section. So uh, we have a bye for our first game. So. Uh, games start for sectionals next week, and uh, we have a bye, so we don't have to play until next Saturday, and that'll be at 1.30 at April Park. The details will be on the website if you're interested in possibly attending. So that's very exciting, and also uh, congratulations to our uh, wrestling team, our mm -hmm. Salem Cambridge wrestling team, number one in the section, and we have uh, three uh, wrestlers moving on to states, from what I understand, and I hope uh, if I'm wrong, please forgive me, uh, um, wrestling team, but I believe there are three that are moving on to states um, this weekend, and that's in Albany. Uh, so, And two coaches of the year. Yes, yes. yes. A lot of excitement, and um, I, oh, one other thing is uh, in the next Few days we'll be sending out a midwinter newsletter and we're going to try it uh, as an, an um, electronic newsletter only. We'll see how that goes. I will email it out to everyone as, as well. Um, we'll see what the feedback is and I think as part of our um, kind of strategic planning we can kind of maybe gather some information and look a little more at what people prefer. Um, but so we're going to just try it as an electronic and we're looking for feedback. If you hear people really would live like that in the mail, that's something we can consider um, for the future. But just trying to add an extra newsletter cycle in as opposed to just the beginning of the year in the budget um, mm -hmm. newsletter. And then with last year, we did a separate top 10. And I think we could put some, share some news in there. But just trying to celebrate some mid year accomplishments and highlight some of our activities at school. So we're going to give it a try. We'll see what the feedback is and um, don't want to overwhelm people with stuff, but I also think it's nice to to kind of celebrate and recognize what's going on in the district. So, mm -hmm. right. so keep an eye out for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Gina, do we have any modifications to this uh, evening's agenda? We do. Um, item 6.10, the bid approval is going to be removed under action items. 
And then we have two additional action items that are actually in the back of your packet on the agenda that will be added. Uh, does anybody wish to, so we can move on to the consent agenda? Does anyone wish to have any items removed from the consent agenda? Entertain a motion to accept the consent, consent agenda as presented. So moved. Move to the item. Second. Second by Peter. Uh, to accept the minutes from January 18th, the treasurer's report, the internal claims audit, the condition of accounts, and the CSC report. All those in favor? We signify by reading the hearing. So our finance committee has become our um, budget workshops. We had our second budget workshop um, this time with the, um, why can't I think of the name of it? Admin. <laughs> At the admin budget. Um, they had buildings and ground previously and um, I think things are going really well. It's nice to see everything coming together and we'll have the next one in beginning of March. Um, we kind of wrapped up uh, some of some of the review of the curriculum related policies, kind of the, a first look um, so that they're now uh, going to be passed on to the policy committee <laughs> before they uh, end up on the agenda, but just really trying to get some standardization in their processes. Um, so that uh, everybody's doing things the same way. And the policy uh, committee continues to work on the policy to waive tuition for uh, non-resident students of, of staff members here at the school. Uh, we do have, we made some, I think, strategic decisions. They will be separate policies. We will have an agreement that will be entered into between the family and the superintendent or the non-resident student. So we have some questions and we're still working on getting the, the rest of it fine too, but we're hoping to be completed very quickly. So that should be ready for it. So, you know, and, I, and I just want to add that um, typically we start to receive um, requests for next year, March, April, and what we'll just do is hold on to those. And then um, once the policy is updated, I will uh, let the um, those members of the faculty or staff know that we've updated our policy and ask them if they'd still like to, you know, if they would like to leave their their request on the table for the board's consideration. So we will make sure that they know and and um, just follow up with them on that. So then we'll just hold them in and, and hopefully, you know, by the end of the school year, we'll we'll have them approved. But we we do have some time. And Chris is does. Once we do the work on the policy and bring it here, it does take a couple of months for us to, to reach the conclusion uh, and adopt the policy. So um, it does it will take us a little bit of time to get to the, the finish line, but it, it, it's coming. And then we move on to curriculum policy. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, moving on to action items and the area of personnel. A motion to approve the following personnel items marked fish. DASHA coordinator, Michelle Crandall, DASHA, well, and they yes. have their effective dates as listed. Michelle Crandall, also a DASHA coordinator, and Julie Murphy as a substitute cleaner, effective February 16th. Second. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Andrea. Uh, any discussion or questions? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried 5 0. Uh, we have some building uh, use requests. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the following three building use requests. We have one from the Little League to approve the building use request from March 1st to August 31st, 2023, for the use of all outdoor athletic fields and outdoor bathrooms and the cafeteria in May in the evening for team pictures. Girls on the Run uh, wish to use the, uh, the building from March 27th to June 7th, 2023, on Mondays and Wednesdays, 3.30 to 5, for access to one lane of the track or the perimeter of the athletic fields. Um, also, if in, in case of inclement weather, they might be inside. And the Salem Sewer Committee wishes to uh, request the use of the school library for meetings 
5 o'clock to 9 o'clock starting on February 17th and running various days through June 30th. So moved. Motion by Heidi. Second. Second by Andrea. Any comments, questions, concerns? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried by zero. Um, the cooperative purchasing program. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the participation in the cooperative purchasing program coordinated by Wishibosis for bids awarded in the 23 22 23 school year. Um, commodity 23 24. 20, oh, yeah. 23 yeah. 24. I'm sorry, Second. Second by Heidi. Any other questions or concerns? <clears throat> All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried 5 0. Um, entertain a motion to approve the notification of amendment to the professional services agreement between the Board of Education and Mosaic Associates Architects for the remaining scope of the work. So moved. Motion by Dia. Second. Second by Nambia. Any additional questions or concerns? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried 5 0. Um, Entertain a motion to approve the agreement between the superintendent of schools and the Washington Academy Teachers Association. This agreement is the union contract for the period of July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2023. So moved. Motion by Heidi. Second. Second by Peter. Any further discussion? This is simply approving the, the, the finalized version yes. of the contract with all the MOAs and all the other. The final version, yes. So originally, it's my understanding that um, the, all of the changes, agreed upon changes on language, were approved by, uh, in an MOA, mm -hmm. and then with the intent that then they would be transferred into one complete document, and that um, obviously took us took the, some time um, to accomplish that, that. So it's just approving that final document just as an entirety. Um, just to cover the complete document. Okay. Because we have individual pieces. Right. Of, it's all been. Yeah. Approved. Just clarify this. Yes. Any other questions, concerns? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried 5 0. Entertain a motion to approve the MOA between the Washington Academy Teachers Association and the Salem Central Schools. Central School District. This MOA is regarding a district teacher providing direct instruction for a district student <clears throat> until the student is placed in a program to meet his or her educational needs. This MOA is in effect for the 22-23 school year. So moved. Motion by Peter. Second. Second by Heidi. Any other questions or concerns? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried 5-0. Entertain a motion to appoint Julie Norshield for direct instruction tutoring that is beyond the length of the school day. Effective date is September 6, 2022. Too much. Second. <clears throat> Sorry. It's okay. I, my head is down. <laughs> and the second was Dan. Okay. Um, any questions or concerns? This was just, we just didn't get it on an agenda. For now, we didn't have the MOA. Um, oh, didn't have the MOA. yes, the MOA. Thank you. Um, took a lengthy period of time to negotiate. Uh, thank you. Yes. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Yeah. Motion carried by sir. Entertain a motion to appoint the following tutors for the 22 23 school year Katie Quack, Rebecca Quinn, and Alexis Keenan. So moved. Motion by Heidi. Second. Any questions or concerns? No. Did you 6.7 so you approved the MOA related to the tutoring and then we did we do both? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be short. Appointment. I got yep. it. Julie, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But also the MOA. So yes. there's an MOA. Yeah, we did the MOA. We did the, that. That we did that. Okay. We did, we did the approval, and then we had the MOA okay. approval. Okay. And then the direct. Yeah. So, all right. I just wanted to be yeah. sure. So, so, you're using a different tutor. Well, it's, it's all 
and of course it yes. goes on to different pages. So sometimes okay. I'm afraid I do need. I apologize. I just don't know. Your mind, I, I, sure. I, I need that double check because I know I sometimes drop things when I, I see the page. Right. Yes, yes, right. Okay. Okay. All right. Got right. yeah, the official. So. And we have our motions. We have our motions and we're trying. Oh, any other questions? If you? No. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carried. All right, we did that. <laughs> Entertain a motion to approve the draft 2023-24 school year calendar. So moved. Motion by Heidi. Second. Second by Peter. Any discussion? Or? I just have a question. Mm -hmm. When is graduation on that calendar? I'm very confused. Like it looks like it's, would it be the 28th or would it be the 23rd? Like, it's the 28th. But so we have all of our tenured people are done on the 27th. So they're I, usually complete school before. Okay. So it's are, like a full like two days in between. Right. So that's why right. I, it looks so right. weird. I was right. The, it's, late. The, it's very late. Oh my so gosh. The, the faculty members that oversee the advisors for graduation, they that's part of their study. No, right. But it just um, seems like it was, it doesn't usually seem like there's a big of a gap. Right, right. The, the past few years, it's either on the day of or the right. day before. Yeah. But some of this calendar, I think I um, talked about this previously. So everything's getting pushed out a little bit because of the addition of Juneteenth as mm -hmm. the state holiday, as well as the um, there is another holiday on the 17th, so they make that rate a rating day in case there were um, schools. Uh, so it doesn't it isn't one that we recognize, but maybe some other schools in the um, state may recognize and I want to close for that holiday. Uh, it's a religious holiday, and so they made that a rating day. So they had to push regents further out, and typically we. We need to obviously be here through um, Regents in the last rating day. And the last rating day for Regents is the 26th. So that's a scoring day. Wow, for the 28th is so late. For right. That's crazy. I think my graduation is yeah. 28th. Actually, exactly. yeah. it's pretty late. It's all in a cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Calendar calendar calendar. Calendar. yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? And this mirrors the MOSIs? Yes, very much so. The only difference is our conference days are a little um, different just so that we can use their their, tra their yeah, trainers. trainers for yeah. professional development on yeah. our conference day. But yes, yeah, very all the same vacation. Though. There's two days that are different right. than I saw on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Right, and those are just those are our conference yeah. days. Um, any other for any questions? No? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried. I see it. And in your vacation. <laughs> All right, and we delete the bid approval. And there has been a tax uh, correction. Entertain a motion to approve the application from Linda Cerrone, Town of Hebron, and that a refund be issued in the amount of $1,020.45 due to the fact that it is evident that the owner applied timely with the local assessor for the senior citizens exemption. The assessor failed to place the exemption on the assessment roll. This is a clerical error as defined in the real property tax law. Second. Second by Andy. Any other questions, concerns? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carried 5-0. Heidi, we have two um, donations. Would you take the first one from the shop for us? Um, so, recommend a motion to accept the following donation from the shop off Broadway um, that the Board of Education accept $9,632.60 from the shop off Broadway. These grants are for various groups, faculty of the district, and activities and services that are to benefit the students. So moved. Second. Okay. And Dan. Do you want me to do the PTA one, too? Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Motion passes 4 0. Yeah. And I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah. You want to do the other one? Sure. Oh, I don't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know my chair. <laughs> 
All right, recommend a motion that the Board of Education accept a donation totaling $750 from the Salem Central PTA. This donation went for various faculty for supplies and benefits for students. I move second. Dan and Peter, all those in favor? All those, uh, that motion passes 5-0. Yeah. And we, we still have the two uh, action items that are on the agenda, but I'd like to postpone those until after our executive session discussion, so we may have uh, action pending after our executive session. Okay. Right. Moving on to other business, we have some discussion on uh, athletics for the 23-24 school year. So just uh, a follow up to our discussion uh, last meeting, I uh, just wanted to uh, give you a few updates uh, related to mergers. So our uh, boys modified soccer for the fall will also be a merged team with Cambridge next year. Um, we do not need to bring that back to the board for a vote because um, the resolution was just to vote for boys soccer, soccer did not um, it didn't specify, specify the levels, the levels okay. so we just need to resubmit um, our paperwork for all right for, for modified so just wanted to bring you up to date on that um, also we've been having uh, some questions and discussions related to boys basketball and uh, there has been I've received quite a bit of interest from students and families uh, expressing the desire to explore merge for boys basketball for next year. Uh, that is something that Will Moore, our athletic director, is exploring. Um, it has reached out to Cambridge. Uh, that, as you know, is a is a process for them as well. We have not heard back. I, I it, it's. I have had some informal conversations with their superintendent over the past few months, just saying, hey, we might want to be keeping our eye on this. And, um, you know, they seem, he seemed receptive and did not seem to indicate um, any resistance to continue to explore merge opportunities. But it, I don't think it's an indication that they're not interested. I just think they have a process they need to follow as well. So. We do have time for the fall. I believe it's, um, oh no, for winter, I believe it's June 1st. So we yeah, still have months. some time. So I'll keep you posted on that. And girls basketball, we've talked. Oh, back to boys basketball for a minute. So um, Will and I also are going to meet um, with the coaches. Uh, I think there's some interest in uh, Coach Eastman uh, possibly step away from the varsity, but he's not 100% sure. And um, obviously, we have Connor West here now and has some interest in coaching. So, we're not sure what that would look like for next year. So, we're going to involve uh, Coach Parker, Coach Eastman, and Coach West in you know, additional conversations as well as we're exploring with Cambridge. So, um, there had been some initial conversations with Coach Eastman um, earlier in the season. But obviously, uh, if Coach West might be stepping into the picture on the boys' side, we would want to include him as well. So just wanted to add that because I think there was a question uh, from someone on the board wanting to know if we were working with yeah. the coaches. And I just think it's important. They they have, you know, a feel for the mm -hmm. program and, yep. and what is necessary. So mm -hmm. and may have some ideas that just if you're not doing it every day. Right. Right, absolutely. And as I had indicated, we had earlier on had some conversations, but I think you know, as we move closer, they'll they'll still be involved in that. Okay. Similarly, uh, some discussion about girls soccer. Uh, we were we were slated to meet this week um, with Coach Keys, and uh, she has been out uh, for a few days and uh, has had to postpone. And so we'll be um, speaking with her and Coach Nestle, um, looking at the numbers. The numbers are pretty tight for next year. And um, there, any way you look at it, there would not be the numbers there for JV. And um, if there's no JV, then you're really going to have a very large number on modified uh, with, with some of the ninth graders. I think um, there would be five. Um, ninth 
graders next year. So, and then there would also be, I believe, um, quite a few 10th graders um, on varsity. So, you know, really looking at those kids, you know, some kids may not get as much playing opportunity and there's really a lot to weigh there. And um, it's always a difficult uh, conversation to have, but it is a conversation we're looking at that I believe is um, an earlier deadline. So it's something that we really need to work through and um, have on the table at the March meeting if we are gonna pursue that fall merger, so. And this is the only box board at this point that isn't merged, correct? Correct. So really what we, yes. And, um, you know, and our numbers are lighting, looking on the light side again for track this year. Um, we're having some di difficulty finding a modified track coach how do we know that? Because he literally just sent the email out today about sign up. Well, I just think knowing the numbers from last year. Okay. You know, I, I'm like, last year was very low. Okay, I don't actually, know what the numbers are for track. We coaches. actually combined, combined boys and girls with one coach because of our numbers. So, and the lack of, of available coaches. So it's just a couple of things that it um, we haven't talked about, but I, I think that Cambridge has an interest to talk about track at some point as well. So. We only have a few sports left that will not be merged. It's opportunities for kids to be able to play. Right. Agreed. And I don't know if there would be any thought of just kind of looking at the numbers of, of just class sizes. You know, I know at least my oldest son, fifth grade, there's almost, there's like four or five girls in the entire grade. So, you know, when they, come up when they're coming up through and you know, girls basketball might have lower numbers well boys basketball might be higher but just kind of seeing what that might look like um and just saying well you know what maybe cambridge has a really you know low numbers of boys in their fifth grade and and trying to to match that up just to, to see um what that looks like Right. I mean, I think I agree. I think the trends are very interesting. It's always, I think when you're looking and even at the modified numbers and I, I'm a math person, obviously, yeah. so I haven't really studied it, but it seems that you always have much a very healthy modified, but then kids don't always continue to those upper right. levels and you've sure. got that factor yes. as well. So and the other thing is, and I'm not, you know, opportunities for kids, but with the programs that have been merged since they are little, like football and wrestling, we've had a lot more success in those than we are in these other programs where we're partially merging. So it's just something to think about. I know the point of a merger is not to make super teams. I'm not saying that, but just that as we go forward, you know, it, the, the ones that we have really joined forces with, they've had quite a bit more success than, than some of these others. And competitive. Yes. Right. And I, competitive and I, is they have competitive opportunities. Um, and, and I think that is important. Um, when we've had some teams over the past few years and when you lose by a significant amount that can become disheartening and, and, um, sometimes interfere with your desire to move forward the following year and um, you know we want to make sure that it's also a positive experience and, and we want kids to stay in the game per se. Absolutely. So I, I think it's important and they, I think we're lucky that we've had a good partnership with Cambridge. Um, you know some schools sometimes are mer have to merge with different schools for different sports and we've had some consistency in the ability to to be merged would have one partner and I, I think that's helped yes helped right. us as well right. and our kids um you know are playing together on I, I talked to one parent and they said oh you know we we think that it would be great because you know our kids are playing together on soccer and baseball so they would love to play together on basketball so um I think the kids um uh, really spend are spending quite a bit of time together yeah. in neighboring yeah. communities as well. Great. So we'll look forward to uh, talking to Cambridge a little more about that as well. I will keep you posted. 
and, and just let me know if you have any other. I think at this point I've answered all the questions I received recently. Yes. Okay. No, I I think we originally had that on there, but we did we did have our discussions at the workshop, and and we yeah. we agreed um, that we wanted just to really see where how our budget works out yes. um, mm -hmm. with that in there, mm -hmm. and um, we'll. Come back to that. Okay, very good. And your healthy kids program? Yeah, so uh, I had sent um, and shared with you previously some information on the healthy kids program, and that's before and after school care. It, healthy kids program is an organization. Uh, originally, before COVID, they had partnered with Fort Edward that did not get off the ground uh, due to COVID. They have rejoined forces. Um, this organization is quite uh, embedded in other communities throughout the state and they're looking to expand in our area and our region. Uh, I really thought they had a good presentation. Really what we provide is the facility use um, in the space. They, they do the hiring, um, the advertising, they assist families with applying uh, for assistance. Um, that they may qualify for financially mm -hmm. to help pay for that. So, you know, what the board is um, willing, I would like to move forward and explore that opportunity with them more. Really, on our part, it's allowing them to use our facility. They do have references. I, um, I have one, just one share that question. with you. Is it accessible to all students, I mean, mm -hmm. students with disabilities, students with? That's my understanding. And also, um, typically, they set up in cafeteria, in the cafeteria before and after school. One of the things we would have to do is work with the wrestling team um, during wrestling because the modified wrestling uses the cafeteria. But I think because we have two facilities and the athletic directors, I think we can work through that. Um, but typically, it would be in the cafeteria, so it would be accessible. Um, and they can take up to, the, they would do up to two groups of kids. And um, actually, I ran into Krista Sullivan uh, with the courthouse, and they were interested in possibly starting something. So if there was quite a bit of interest, we could, if we didn't have, we didn't think the space was right for both groups here, we could have a group and possibly there could be a group at the courthouse um, after school or before school. So I, um, that the courthouse is interested in partnering with us and, you know, many opportunities. So that's, um, I think, a, a great service that could be provided to the community. I think um, there's a need. The, yes, yeah. there is a need. So I would like to look into that if the board. Uh, the literature spoke about a summer program. Uh, they can do that yeah. as well. Yeah. And so that would probably be some coordination with the courthouse again, question. not yeah. to yeah. conflict with lunch, learn, and play, mm -hmm. and or maybe complement it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there could they be. They can only do so many weeks. So, right. they might go break right. up where it's yeah. right. a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. My only concern was then running them out of business as well. Right. No, so we're so very, it's... yeah, I'm very yeah. aware of that. And Krista and I talked about that as well. And she actually asked me, would they do summer? And I said, oh, that is a possibility. Yeah. So, uh, I but, didn't want to have too much of a conversation until I mm -hmm. you know, got some, had some discussion with you. Yeah. And lunch, learn, plays afternoon. So, I mean, this yeah. maybe could be something that would complement right. it. Right. Yeah. Right. So, they'd probably appreciate this. No, right. I think so. And I think parents would appreciate it. There's yeah. not yeah, a lot. And it may not be all the parents that need that. that right. Yeah. Well, right. So, it could be fewer kids right. here in the morning right. going over yeah. there yeah. to lunch. Yeah. So, so I also so am working on connecting with, uh, connecting this, um, the coordinator for this with uh, Sue Clary, because they also could provide daycare yeah. um, for younger children. And uh, I, you know, let, let the representative know that we don't have the space in our facility to accommodate yeah. that, but to talk to Sue, uh, because there are some possible properties that might be available. And they said they, they, they often go into communities and rent or buy property to have their um, daycare. There definitely is a need for daycare. Right, so and, and so, right, exactly. So I, I think it's really a great possibility for our community. Um, so so what we would do is start, if, if the board sounds like you're, you're willing, uh, I'll 
um, continue to work with her because it would, it's really the time to start the planning. And if, if there is summer available, most likely it wouldn't be this summer, it would the following summer, you know, really get this going. But I think then once you have the interest, you see the quality of the program and or care, then that would hopefully, you know, lead families into that, possibly that summer piece. Right. Okay, I'll keep you posted, thank you. Um, opportunities for the board to be heard. Alexis, did you be, did you have anything that you wanted to, to share with us or uh, well, I don't yes. mean to put you on the spot. No, it's okay. Um, yesterday there was an assembly for Tay Fisher um, and I definitely thought that was a very beneficial assembly because a lot of the ninth through 12th grade kids like got involved um, and he seemed to really have a good story that like stuck with a lot of kids because we were talking about it in my AP Lit class. And a lot of kids were saying how, you know, they did have something to relate to him with. And it's very nice to have people come into our school and talk about relatable things for kids because I think they need to see that and see a future like with growing up and see what they possibly could be because I think that a lot of kids don't take education as seriously anymore so just having people come in and just seeing their experience with education and them persevering through high school and going to college if wanted um, is very beneficial for high schoolers. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. I spoke with this is on the sewer issue. Um, we recently had a meeting with the Delaware engineering people and the Lake George community development uh, program. Um, just to, to give keep everyone appraised on what's going on there. If the timeline continues as it has been, if the render referendum is voted on time, if the referendum is approved, um, Delaware engineering will work with Mosaic to make sure that we don't have to replace the lawn twice. Um, or repave the, the, the parking lot twice. Um, they will coordinate all that and make sure that if Mosaic, if, if, if the, the line has to go out this way, out through the, the back parking lot, um, they will work Mosaic to make sure that when that parking lot is torn up, they'll put the sewer line in there. Um, again, that's assuming the timelines right. stay matched up, uh, but they are willing to right. work in conjunction with that. So we don't look stupid having the driveway <laughs> torn up twice. So. Just at the on here, the March meeting. Oh, the, our date has changed. It's changed right. to the 14th. Tuesday the 14th. Tuesday, that's right. Yep. Any other? You guys switch it So we have some dates to remember. Looks like a lot of good things coming up to look forward to, including winter break that starts soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Additions to that, or? I don't think they're covered. So, is the pops concert is that one night junior high, one night senior high, or are they both nights? No, one night junior high, one night senior high. Yeah. yeah. Just checking. I think the 22nd is junior high and the 23rd is. Thank you. Yeah. At this point, I'd like to open the meeting up to the public if there's anybody who has any questions or concerns they'd like to share with the board. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, my name is Mark Cummings, and uh, I appreciate everything y'all do. Really respect a lot of the hard work that's been going on and so forth over the past couple of challenging years. Um, specifically, I'm here to say a few words on behalf of the uh, Cambridge Salem Wrestling Program. Um, I just of course, Coach Fraunhofer, Coach Chris Fraunhofer, Coach uh, Mr. LeBlanc, and Sh Coach Sherman Trinkle <laughs> from Cambridge. Um, just to give a little context, you know, on behalf of some of the words I'd like to further express on behalf of the program, most of y'all are aware, some of you may not. I had three kids that went through school here. I highly regard, uh, appreciate, you know, and respect and admire our school here, but, you know, I, we really had a hands-on uh, approach with my three kids being in the program, quite active, um, you know, in, 
quite involved in sports and so forth. Um, in the course of all that, we witnessed a lot of clubs, organizations. We were we were quite involved. We were uh, around the state with my kids, and I followed the wrestling program uh, in other states. Um, I've seen a lot of other similar programs, and it, it, in my opinion, you know, we, we truly have something special here, mm -hmm. a, a model program on behalf of our Salem Cambridge wrestling program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know this is probably not news to some of you, uh, maybe most of you, but I, I just felt, hey, I, I felt it's time someone here, you know, to come and express and give some kudos on behalf of the program. Um, specifically, you know, I'd like to really mention and highlight, you know, the professionalism of our coaches, mm -hmm. uh, the integrity, dedication, the commitment, the values, and the character that I know many of you know already that, you know, these, these things are important and there is still not a 24 to 7 basis on behalf of our, our students who are part of, of the program. So really, in conclusion, I just really like to say thanks. Appreciate all the support, and looking forward to you know many future years. Uh, and enjoy your next week's vacation. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. No, I'm just here to thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave me alone. <laughs> okay. um, entertain a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of discussions involving proposed, pending, or current litigation, collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, and the discussion of the financial employment history of a particular person um, on matters of appointment and employment. So moved. Motion to hurry. Second. Second by Peter. All those in favor, please say hi by raising your hand. Motion carries by zero. We do anticipate. Even positive. We do anticipate that there will be action. 